What's up, Earth Rockers? It's your boy Shovatar here, back again for some more Portrait of Ruin. And this time I'm going to be talking about what is, in my opinion, the other fun way to play Portrait of Ruin. In my first Portrait of Ruin video, I kind of briefly outlined this, but I'll go over it again. There are many different ways to play Portrait of Ruin. This is because there are four difficulty levels, and there's a new game plus. And of those, with those two factors, you can do like hard mode on a fresh file, you can do hard mode new game plus, you can do like normal new game plus, you can do hard mode max level one new game plus, hard mode, like whatever. There's like a million different ways to do it. In my opinion, the two ways to play Portrait of Ruin that are the most fun are just a fresh file on normal mode, just like the first thing you would do if you play the game, just playing it on the, on the lowest difficulty with a fresh file. And then the other most fun way to play the game, in my opinion, is to do hard mode, new game, hard mode, max level one, new game plus. So the hardest difficulty, but simultaneously taking advantage of all of the tools that the game gives you if you take advantage of new game plus. And when I did my Dawn of Sorrow videos, I ignored New Game Plus, which in retrospect I think was a foolish decision because I think if I had engaged with New Game Plus, I would have had an experience that would have allowed me to circumvent a lot of the things about Dawn of Sorrow that I did not like. So learning from that experience, I decided to give New Game Plus a shot in Portrait of Ruin, and I'm going to be spending a little bit of time explaining like what the basic differences are between New Game Plus and regular, like a fresh file for Portrait of Ruin. Um, I'm going to be playing it only as Jonathan. For this run, uh, you know, obviously I'm also I'm going to be using dual crushes. I'm going to be using like I'm going to have Charlotte buff me, but like I'm only going to be controlling directly Jonathan for the for the run. So I can't exactly say that it's Jonathan only. Um, but I'm only but I bring this up because because Jonathan is really where the differences in New Game Plus are the most important because New Game Plus carries over all of your sub weapon masteries from the previous run, which means that I don't have to. We're, I, I'm starting the game off with mastered shurikens. I don't have to worry about going and, like, farming shit to master the cross before I go into the Nest of Evil. Or, like, mastering the Bible before I get into, like, the fucking, um... Uh... The Burnt Paradise or whatever, or whatever I want to use that for. Like, I can just play the fucking game. And that's kind of the thing about Dawn of Sorrow that I always... That I gave it the most shit for, is, like, why are you not just letting me play the fucking game? Why are you making me farm? Why are you making me, like, fuck with all these systems? And with Portrait of Ruin, I had similar criticisms about the quest system, where I didn't really like, I didn't like the quest system. And and you, you do have to engage with it a little bit in New Game Plus, but just so that you can unlock the Nest of Evil, you just need to do enough quests that when the Nest of Evil is unlocked, um, that 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 the quest shows up in um, Wind's little quest log and unlocks the actual zone. And fortunately, New Game Plus carries over a lot of quest-specific items. Like, when you when you turn in a quest for for Wind, it doesn't get rid of, like, the Beehive or the um, Amanita or the, or the Five Cakes or whatever. You keep those. It's just checking to see if you've collected them. That means on New Game Plus, a lot of the quests will kind of complete themselves and already be finished. Um... So that's another thing about New Game Plus that makes it really great, that makes it more of like a streamlined experience. And another thing about New Game Plus, specifically as relates to hard mode max level 1, I said in my Alucard, in one of my Dawn of Sorrow videos, I talked a little bit about Portrait of Ruin, and I said that I wasn't going to do hard mode um, max level 1 because of just a personal taste thing, like the kind of difficulty that I prefer. I don't mind it when you are really vulnerable in high in higher difficulties. Like, I don't mind if you take a lot of damage. Like, I fucking love Dracula's Curse, right? Um, what I don't like is when enemies are damage sponges. I don't like it when difficulty comes from the fact that you do less damage. Symphony of the Night on the Saturn had a hard mode that where the, the thing they did to make it a hard mode was just double all non-boss enemy health, which is like... Okay, yes, it's harder, to get into the alchemy lab and have to hit a skeleton six times before it dies, but it's just not fucking fun. Like, I just I just hate damage sponge enemies. And hard mode max level one didn't appeal to me specifically for that reason. But then I learned about these other systems that are in place. Uh, in my, I, I don't know if they put this in specifically to mitigate that problem or if it's just a happy coincidence, but um, if you complete... So the way New Game Plus works is you could keep doing New Game Pluses like over and over and over again on the same, on the same save file. 
Like you can just keep you can just keep going. And what the what Portrait of Ruin does is that if you have beaten other hard mode levels um, on a save file, that save file gets like a permanent buff to all subsequent runs. Like for example, if I beat um, hard mode max level 50, then the next time I start up a new game plus, I would start off with 50 more luck. Um, if I beat max 25, I would get a permanent plus 50 buff to intellect for all subsequent runs on that file. And if I beat max level 1, I would get a permanent plus 50 buff to strength. Uh, and that might sound overpowered, but like I said, max level 1 means that you're not getting any strength from level ups, and so the only, the only, or int, so the only source of damage you have is your gear, and that's not going to change throughout the whole game. And, you know, again, is that harder? Yeah. Uh, is it less fun? Yeah. I, I would prefer a game where I am really strong, and then if I take damage, I take a lot of damage. Like, it's the perfect, it's the perfect Castlevania mixture of fragility combined with really, really, um, really high offensive power that keeps the pace of the game lightning fast um makes it feel like like fair here i leave the room and come back in specifically just to reset the positions of the enemies up there because i just didn't like the way the things were shaping up i wanted to kill the death mask as soon as it spawned in and then immediately go and deal with the devil and once that was like once once they were not in the positions that i wanted them to be i just i just didn't like the way it was looking so that's what this that's what this run is it's hard mode New Game Plus, max level 1, but it's also um, with like the plus 50 strength, the plus 50 int, plus 50 luck. Luck doesn't really matter. Luck is basically irrelevant at this point in the game. Um, and what this does is this um, prevents a, a, or it circumvents a problem that is, that is consistent with games like this, as I just demonstrated. When I say games like this, I mean games with RPG elements. Um, which is the reverse difficulty curve, where it's harder at the start and gets easier as it goes on. But when you have the same stats throughout the whole game, when you're not leveling up at all, that counteracts that, where because you're not getting any stronger, but the enemies are, it actually does have more of a traditional difficulty curve. I think I said in my Alucard video, and I said it in my first Portrait of Ruin video, that playing Portrait of Ruin hard mode outside of the context of New Game Plus is like sticking your dick in a blender. And I stand by that statement, but it's only really that bad at the very start of the game. And I think I already said this, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say it again just just to sort of reiterate my, my reasoning for doing like New Game Plus for hard mode. Like the City of Haze on New Game on, on hard mode, even if you're like doing max level 25 or max level, even if you're gaining levels while you're doing it, City of Haze on hard mode outside of New Game Plus is just fucking absurd. Like, you, everything two shots you, some enemies literally one shot you. New Game Plus feels like it's balanced around, or rather, hard mode feels like it's balanced around New Game Plus. That's just really the impression that I get. Um, and I don't know if Dawn of Sorrow is like that, because I never did Dawn of Sorrow hard mode, but. Um, so I don't know if that's a change or not. That's also the kind of thing that hard mode fucking loves to do, like just make zombies pop up. Like, before you can fucking react to them. Another thing about New Game Plus that makes it really fun is the fact that you can start off with the winged boots. This means that, you're, that you move really fast. And this is something that I wish more Castlevania games with RPG elements had done. Because it's something that I really like in RPGs, where, like, the later in the game you get, the higher your movement speed is. Like, the faster you move. Everything about how you just interact with the world feels smoother and faster. It really makes you feel more powerful, honestly, than almost any other... Um, change to like your combat prowess just moving faster and it helps keep, keep the pace even faster which is why I like i sort of think of the two ways to play the game that are the most fun is like you are at max power and the enemies are at max power or like you are at minimum power and the enemies are also at minimum power because that way like it's like the perfect it's the perfect pacing that way in my in my opinion so with the last video, because it was so long, I spent a lot of time talking about the game in general. Here I'm going to try to be more like play-by-play, -play, like talk about what's actually going on as it's happening and, and ways that I could improve. However, one of the consequences of the lack of a, of, a, of a traditional difficulty curve is that this early game is not going to be super interesting. Um, I mean, I just I shredded the Dulahan in like two seconds. Um, 
Same with the same with the Behemoth. He got it even worse. So the early game is kind of not like super interesting, but um, but the bats are still pretty scary. That's the thing about the winged boots too. Is that the winged boots like these bats on hard mode? If you try to play outside of New Game Plus, those bats will just fucking destroy you because you move so slow and they just angle towards you in this in this weird in this weird way. Um, but with the winged boots on, you can just kind of move around them, and you can kind of like outmaneuver them in a way that you can't outside of New Game Plus. So that's why I think New Game Plus is more fun. You move faster, you're stronger, you're not like it doesn't it doesn't feel unfair. The challenge in hard mode on a fresh file feels like unfair. Um, and another thing about it is just like. The thing about the difficulty is that, you know, if a game is hard, I'll go back to Dracula's Curse again. I was thinking, I've been thinking about Dracula's Curse a lot lately, and there it is. Is that, is that the first time I've taken damage in this run? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, of course it would be the bats. Um, speaking of Dracula's Curse, Dracula's Curse also had very dangerous bats. But the point that I'm making is that if a game is as hard as Dracula's Curse, and it lasts for 45 minutes, say, that's fine. If a game is as hard as Dracula's Curse and it lasts for like four hours, five hours, that's kind of when I say, okay, this is now no longer fun. Um, like in Dracula's Curse, getting the footage that I got for that game, it had this nice mixture of like, I didn't want to fuck up, I didn't want to lose all the time that I'd spent to get to like the last levels. Um, so, so success felt good, but defeat didn't feel, like, crushing. If I fucked up in a Dracula's Curse run, you know, I would lose maybe 50 minutes at most. An hour at most. But with, with, um, if I was going to try to do, like, a whole, like, fresh game file, like, no items, hard mode run of Portrait of Ruin, it's like, okay, I get to the Nest of Evil, and Abaddon just fucks me, as he is prone to do, and now I've lost, like, four hours, and now I want to put a fucking shotgun under my chin. Like, it's just not fun to lose that much, to lose that much progress, in my, in my opinion. So, New Game Plus hard mode, like, just having the winged boots, having all this high power means that you get through everything super fast. Um, and this boss is, like, god-awful. Um, this is, like, a terrible boss. This is, the only two ways to fight this boss that are at all acceptable are on normal mode and then on new game plus hard mode because hard mode reduces all the damage you deal by 25% just sort of baseline and that boss is so fucking tedious even without that damage reduction that adding that on just makes it fucking unbearable but in the wonders of new game plus he just fucking dies he dies in a civilized time frame so that's kind of what, what the purpose of this run is, is to make, is to turn Portrait of Ruin into a game that's like paced more like a classic Castlevania game where everything's super fast and the whole thing is over in like, well, it still takes longer than a classic Castlevania game was. I think this is going to be about 90 minutes in total. Um, that's kind of, that's longer than any, any classic Castlevania game. I think the only one that came close to that was maybe four. I think four was like a hundred, was like, not a hundred, um, like 70 minutes, maybe. I don't really remember. But still, like, the, the stakes the stakes are are lower. If I fuck up on the Nest of Evil, I lose, like, an hour. I don't lose, like, fucking five hours. Um, another thing that I want to mention, speaking of the Nest of Evil, which which the Nest of Evil, I guess in case you, like, are... In case you haven't watched any of my other Portrait of Ruin videos, the Nest of Evil is the ninth painting. It's, like, the, it's basically the hardest level of the game. It's a big, like, gauntlet. It's kind of like the arena in Circle of the Moon, but it's way more fun. Um... And that's kind of like where you die, if you're gonna die in Portrait of Ruin. You die in the Nest of Evil. And I kind of made a little... stipulation with myself, or like, or like a chat, like a sort of like an, an added challenge onto just like, don't ever die. Which is, I decided that I didn't want to, um... I didn't want to use any, any healing items until I got to the Nest of Evil. Beating this game without healing items was just not feasible, mostly just mostly because of there there are one or two parts in the Nest of Evil that I think are objectively badly designed. And I talked about that in my last video, but I'll but I'll bring it up again because it really does kind of piss me off. 
Um, and, I, and I couldn't envision doing those parts without healing items, so I decided I'll use healing items in the Nest of Evil because I feel like I have to, but outside of the Nest of Evil, I'm going to really try my best to not do that. So that was my like added challenge for this run. I can't really express that in the thumbnail because I can't say no items because it's not no items. I do use healing items in the Nest of Evil. That's just kind of like an added little thing, and one of the benefits of that is that it does help keep the pace up because it means I'm not constantly like pausing to chug potions. Um, I also want to mention the route that I'm taking here is different from the route that I take in the normal run. That's because I... New Game Plus, you start off with all the sub-weapons you had and all the masteries you had, but you don't start off with all of the, um, like, movement tools you have. You don't start off with, with Toad Morph, you don't start off with Sanctuary, which you need to get the, the real ending, um, to see the second half of the game, pretty much. So I am going to have to come back to the Sandy Grave later, after I get the Toad Morph scroll, to actually um, get the Sanctuary Scroll. So normally the way that I do this in normal mode is that I'll like do one route, then do the second route, but that's because on normal mode I'll do like the, the upper route through the Sandy Grave and then save the subterranean route for when I come back for the Sanctuary Scroll. But that's because on normal mode I'm concerned about map completion. Here I don't care about map completion at all, which is another re reason why New Game Plus is so much fun. It takes everything about the main game that I don't like and it removes it. That's that's why I'm so glad that I chose to engage with it, and why I'm kind of kicking myself that I didn't with portrait with uh, with Dawn of Sorrow rather. Um, but here I take the subterranean route so that I can get the teleport um, the teleport point in the basement, so that way when I do come back here a second time to get the sanctuary spell, I can just take the teleport right into the basement, go up, get the scroll, go back down, teleport back out again. It's just slightly faster. God, this fucking room. This room is like... that's Another thing about the winged boots that's nice is that it lets you just fucking not engage with shit you don't want to deal with. And that's kind of what that room is. That room like had me stumped for so fucking long when I first started playing this game. I was just like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Because it's, it's really hard to fight those turrets. Um, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to use Charlotte, basically, to kill them. And, like, and that's what I said in my last video, is that the whole point of the Sandy Grave is basically to force you to use Charlotte, which I... I stubbornly refuse to do because I well I already talked about that but um, here of course that's not necessary because Jonathan is so because in New Game Plus you're just fucking overpowered and Jonathan's just going to kill everything you have the Holy Claymore which means you can do magic damage to the ghosts um, this bitch is going to die in two fucking seconds or I guess longer than two seconds or whatever that was one more shot than it could have been because the torch intercepted intercepted one of the shurikens. But uh, yeah, and that and that is if I had to make one complaint about New Game Plus, it's that yes, the difficulty curve is more traditional, but the tra traditional difficulty curve is kind of like too it's too extreme. In Harmony of Dissonance, there's an alternative mode, Maxime mode, where you play as Maxime. Who's, who's the second, who's like another playable character, and he can move around the castle in whatever way he wants. He can get to whatever part of the castle in whatever order he wants, whenever he wants. And the thing that they did um, was that they they tweaked the, the stats of all the bosses and enemies so that every boss and every enemy in the game was roughly equally dangerous. Like, all the bosses would do, like, kind of the same amount of damage. Like, they wouldn't, it wouldn't be like... You get to the first boss in Harmony of Dissonance Maxi mode and you kill it in like two hits. No, it would, it would have its health and damage adjusted to sort of be equal with um, with other bosses. And they did that in Maxi mode so that you're only... Because in Maxi mode you have to kill all the bosses to finish it. Making all the bosses equally powerful meant that you didn't have to worry about like your power compared to the boss's power. The, the only thing that would determine in what order you did the bosses would be... Um, what would make the most sense spatially, like what's just the fastest route through the castle. And that was nice because it meant that early bosses were still dangerous and you still had to actually like respect them and, and know what to do with them when you got to them instead of just like steamrolling them in two seconds and then actually, and then only actually fighting the late game bosses. In New Game Plus, they didn't do that. They didn't alter the stats of the bosses at all, which I kind of understand because it would be hard to do that in the context of, like... I mean, it would make sense in, in hard mode max level 1, where your power doesn't change the whole game, but um, for other for other hard modes, it would be weird for like the Dulahan to be, like, as dangerous as the fucking, um... 
uh, the fucking Frankenstein monster in uh, the Dark Academy. Although, honestly, in a hard mode on a fresh file, the Dulahan's the hardest fucking boss in the game, but that's kind of... That's something I, I think I already talked about. But, the, but my point is that the fact that Portrait of Ruin New Game Plus doesn't do anything like what Maxime mode does means that the early bosses are just kind of trivialized. Like, the Dulahan dies in two seconds, the Behemoth dies in two seconds, um... Astarte or Cleopatra or whatever, she dies in like two seconds. Um, which is kind of disappointing. Because I, I really I really took the time to learn the Dulahan and to learn the Behemoth and to learn Cleopatra and then I and then none of that matters. <laughs> they just die in two seconds. I don't I don't really I, I, I appreciate it when games like make you prove that you know what you're doing. If, that way it feels like you're not just like getting shit for free. But oh well. Oh well. God, I fucking hate the City of Fools. I fucking wish I had Griffin Wing, man. I wish I could just, like... I wish I could get through this level as fast as fucking possible, because I actually hate this place. This The City of Fools and the Burnt Paradise has, like, everything that I hate. And I probably already talked about this, too, but I'm just going to bring it up again. Um, environmental hazards also are a thing that are that are, like, consistently dangerous, even in New Game Plus, even if you're taking advantage of all of the all of the buffs you get and all like the items available to you because the thing about about new game plus that's so brilliant is like think again think again about the stats that get buffed when you beat the previous difficulties they don't buff your defense right they don't buff your mind they don't buff your con they buff your offensive stats specifically to achieve that balance that i talked about before that like castlevania balance of high damage and also low um defense like you take a lot of damage and and you deal a lot of damage which is, which is like perfect that's exactly what you would want so, props to them for, for doing that. I don't really know if Dawn of Sorrow had anything comparable to that. Um, but I'm not going to go back and do play Dawn of Sorrow. I'm kind of like... I'm kind of like already way behind. <laughs> um, I, I think I talked about this too, but I'll just say again that my, my plan for this, this YouTube series that I'm doing is that I would be done with the series by mid-May. Obviously that's not going to happen. Because um, I got super busy in April. And also, some games just took me longer than I thought. Harmony of Dissonance took longer than I thought. Um, uh, Dawn of Sorrow definitely took longer than I thought. Um, the boss rush in Dawn of Sorrow almost ruined my life. Um, and then I just got busy with a bunch of other shit. So that the, the mid-May goal ultimately proved to be unrealistic. And another thing is just that like these games, these later games, these like DS trilogy games are like so fucking complicated. Like... This is the case with the Metroidvanias in general compared to the the classic Castlevanias, but like these DS games in particular are like really fucking intricate. And it's also partially my fault because with Portrait of Ruin, I I don't know what it is. I just kind of have this impulse whenever I get multiple playable characters to do like Yeah, I know they're giving me both, but like can I beat the whole game with just one of them? I think I just don't like character swapping mechanics. I I'm, well, okay, I do if it's in Dracula's Curse. Because the thing about Dracula's Curse that makes the character swapping work is that your tools, all three, all the characters in Dracula's Curse have such limited tools that it's very natural to say, well, you need this character or you want this character to do this thing. This is so fucking dangerous, by the way. Me, like, that's exactly why, because I could just fucking die here. But I didn't want to use healing items, so I just kind of grabbed my dick and said, whatever. Jeez. Um, how many? How much time would I have lost? Four, 24 minutes? Okay, that's not that bad. It would have been dangerous to do that in like the Burnt Paradise, but here it's not. It's not that bad. Um, in Dracula's Curse, your your tools are so limited that um, like there's so many things that only Trevor can do. So that even though even though Sypha is generally better at combat than Trevor, it's not like Trevor is ever rendered um, obsolete by Sypha. And then the other two, like Grant and Alucard, like Dracula's Curse is just a different kind of game. But with Portrait of Ruin, it's all just, like, combat, and if you have two characters who are both, like, good at combat, it's like, well, why... what's the incentive to switch? Like, one of them might be slightly better than the other one at a certain situation, but, like, why not... like, it, it, it never felt... it never felt really super necessary the way that it did for, um, Dracula's Curse. Like, on New Game Plus, Charlotte can fucking, like annihilate legion even better than jo than john can but like 
like look what, look what I just did. Jonathan just like shit on that thing, and it took almost no effort. So it's sort of like it's like the, instead of like Dracula's Curse, where it's the difference between being able to do something and not being able to do something. With Portrait of Ruin, it's like the difference between being able to do something in five seconds and being able to do something in like ten seconds, which is not not super um, exciting, and is also sort of like. I mean, this is another thing I talked about in the last video. I, I I, am a fan of simplification. You know, the fewer things I have to keep track of, the fewer things I have to worry about, the happier I am. So if I can just go through the whole game, playing as Jonathan, killing everything, then that's that's what I would prefer to do. Um, and in New Game Plus, that's kind of even more viable than, than, it, than it is in normal mode, because you have... The Holy Claim War, which gives you magic damage, which is, which is the thing that Jonathan just straight up does not have early game. Uh, but that's but that's more um, relevant in the Sandy Grave, like I already said. New Game Plus Max Level 1 doesn't really get hard until you get to... Um, well, there's a couple big difficulty spikes, I would say. The biggest one is, in my opinion, the Stella Loretta fight in the middle of the game, where you have to cast Sanctuary. That's, the, that's one of two parts of the game that I think is actually badly designed. Um... Because it's just it's just not fun. It's not fun to not fight things and to like try to get a cast off, like hoping that you can do it and like hoping that everything goes. I don't know. I just I just don't ever. I never found that fun. Um, but the but the 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 just Stella fight is not hard. Um, although I do think I fuck up pretty badly. I think I, I just got too like aggressive here. I think I I think when she starts doing crescent moons, I think I like jump into it a couple times. No, okay. I guess I. Oh wow, okay. I must have been confusing that with like a, a previous a previous attempt. Yeah, I'm skipping the cutscenes too, by the way, because like this is just supposed to be like I I go as fast as I can. I'm not like. This isn't to showcase the story. This isn't to give you an idea of what the game is actually like. This is like the fastest, most violent, most like high octane, version of Portrait of Ruin, basically. The biggest difference between normal mode and new game plus in the context of like Jonathan only is um is the death fight which I already talked about in normal mode but a new game plus the death because the big problem with with death on normal honestly is just the fact that he has so much health but new game plus you're doing so much damage that it really doesn't matter Here, unfortunately, you have to go back to talk to Wind because once you get Stella's locket, the game doesn't let you go into the uh, into the Forest of Doom until you talk to him. So, here I go back, and this is a good. This is actually good because it gives me a chance to um to go through all of these uh, all these quests, which, like I mentioned before, you do have to kind of engage with the quest system in New Game Plus just to get to the Nest of Evil. I'm pretty sure that's the case anyway. I mean, because you start off one of the things that carries over between one of the things that carries over from New Game Plus is your map percentage completion, so it's not like... So if the game is was only checking for map completion, then... Then the, the Nest of Evil should be available from the start, but it's not. Um, if you go to the start of the castle, you, like the little hole that takes you to the Nest of Evil isn't there, so I'm guessing you still have to actually unlock and complete the quest from from Eric before you actually go and do that. Um, I assume. It would be nice if you didn't have to, but I kind of... I kind of understand the impulse to not... Um, to not just have the hole to the Nest of Evil sitting there at the start of the game, I guess? I, although I don't know what difference that would make. Um, another thing that I should point out about the quest system is that... and about like the way that I'm playing the game is that you might wonder why I'm skipping like all the energy tanks and all the um, all the MP upgrades. It's because on on hard max level one, your like when I said your stats don't change the whole time, I meant your stats don't change the whole time. Energy tanks don't give you any extra health. They will restore your health, but they don't give you any more health. And MP upgrades do the same thing. They'll restore your MP but they won't give you any more um 
than what you start off with. All your stats are determined at the start. You have 608 health. You have, uh, I think it's like 400 MP. Um, and, that's, and that's just what you're stuck with. Although, if you start hard mode on a fresh file, then you do not start with 608 health. You start with 128. And I assume that you gain health from energy tanks as normal in that case. Although I don't know because... You know, doing hard max level 50 on a fresh file is like sticking your dick in a blender, but doing hard max level 1 on a fresh file, it was just like, I don't know, man. That's like just some... I, I don't know what... That's one of those things where it's like... If somebody can do that, if somebody could beat this game, could beat the game doing that, like, that's impressive, obviously, but it's the kind of thing that seems like it would be absolutely no fun to me. <laughs> you know, but people are, people are insane, you know? Like... I, I set out when I did this to sort of like, I, I'm kind of taking like a middle ground with a lot of these games where I'm not like, I'm not learning them so tightly that I can like do no damage or that I can like play them at their absolute hardest. But I, I want to do more than just like play them once and then forget about them. It's important to me that I have more of an understanding of the game and more of a, like, like that I actually know what I'm talking about if I'm going to talk about the game, and that I actually know what I'm doing if I'm going to play it. And that's kind of like, this was like the most palatable way to play the game on a harder difficulty. And also, like, taking full advantage of New Game Plus and, like, playing on hard max level 1 just gives the game a different feel. Like I already said, it feels more like a classic Castlevania, where there's no power scaling, there's no, like... There's no power scaling, you do a ton of damage, you take a ton of damage. It's just it's just honestly more fun. Um not not that I think Not that I think normal mode, like like just playing the game normally, like isn't fun. It is, but it's just it does have these things in these new Castlevania games that I don't like. Like it has grinding, it has um excuse me, farming. And I want to point out something that happened at back there. So you might have noticed that I walked into a hallway with a corpse weed in it. And on hard mode, um, the corpse weeds don't take any time to like come out of their little like weeds. They're already fully formed, ready to spit shit at you. And going into that tiny room with the corpse weed is like... It's one of the fucking dumbest parts of the whole game, because they'll just shoot you instantly. And unless you, you go in with a fully upgraded shuriken and high enough int, to one-shot it with one shuriken throw, it's just gonna fucking hit you for 110, or for like 70, or for whatever, and it's gonna knock you back out of the room. And it's like the most frustrating shit in the world. I guess I haven't actually talked that much about hard mode and what makes hard mode different from normal mode. Um, well, for one thing, you take way more damage. Uh, I think I may have mentioned that in the last video. That's kind of like the baseline hard mode difference. You take more damage and then you deal 25% less damage, but... Uh, in addition to that is a mechanic where the higher the level you are, the more damage you take. And they did that, I think, specifically to avoid a situation where you get into hard mode and you're like, this is too hard, I'm just going to farm levels so that, I don't, so that I don't take that much damage. And the game goes, no, 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 no. The higher level you are, the more damage you're going to take. Uh, sort of capping out at whatever the level cap is for whatever version of hard mode you're doing. In hard max level 1... Like, the max damage is capped out from the start, so everything deals a ton of damage to you. That was fucking close. I really don't like this boss either. This is kind of a... I think I've talked about how water movement is, is sort of never fun. Um, I mean, this is better than the fish boss in Dawn of Sorrow. Although that's not saying... That's not saying much. And this is another thing that's nice about New Game Plus, is that if there's some part of the game that's annoying, it's over real fast. <laughs> what else in hard mode is different? Oh yes, right, of course. This is actually also super important. In hard mode the way that the enemies behave is also different, and, like, some of their capabilities are different. Like, you might have noticed when I was back in the entrance on the way to the Behemoth fight that I hit a, po a zombie and it poisoned me. Zombies will poison you on contact in hard mode, um, 
a lot of enemies just do things faster. I think Axe Knights will throw their axes faster, or like the axes can can start high and then curve low, or start low and then curve high. Um, the bosses are different. You didn't see it here because I um, I killed it so fast, but the Duelahan does like this insane shit with his projectiles, and that's actually the one thing that makes me the most that I'm the most regretful of in terms of the way that I decided to play the game comparing like like normal mode and then hard mode is that the Duelahan on hard mode is actually way more interesting because he does like more um like his projectile attack where he shoots ghosts out of his face is like cooler and he like because because the last one will shoot like four at the same time and you have to like kind of squeeze between them but the problem is that the Duelahan on hard mode is just a fucking asshole like he he just does everything so fast, and if you get hit, you take so much damage. It's just not like, it's just not fun. It feels like it feels like you're. I mean, maybe this is my atrophying neurotransmitters. These fucking dickheads. That's insane. That's fucking ridiculous. Also, I swing over my head, and he just doesn't get fucking hit. Like, come the fuck on. I almost thought about drinking a potion here, but then I remembered that there's a. Uh, there's an energy tank up here that I could use. Um, so even though I'm not get I'm not re I'm not getting any more max health, energy tanks still have uh, some usage. Yeah, the Dulahan on hard mode is is different. Um, Death on hard mode, I think, is different. He summons more scythes, and you'll see that here. Um, but 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 what's more important than the differences between the bosses, the difference between the regular enemies, the fact that the zombies are way faster and poison you is just, like, fucking insane, and it makes certain parts of the early game really fucking punishing. Like, the long, the long outdoor section in the City of Haze where there's, like, zombies and there's, like, a bone thrower, like, nestled among the zombies, that part, if you're doing hard mode on a fresh file, is so fucking hard. Because, like, it's so easy to, like, jump, land on top of a zombie as it's coming out of the floor, and then get, like, bopped for, like, a fucking 100 damage by the bone thrower when you have like 150 health and that's what i mean when i say that like the the difficulty level in portrait of ruin hard mode on an, on a fresh file is like it reaches it it does something that no other castlevania game has done for me which is reach a level of difficulty that i find to just not be fun where i feel like you have not given me the proper tools to handle the, the problems that you're presenting to me. And I've talked before about how that's like a selling point in Castlevania games, is like the idea that you're underpowered, that you're a human going up against, going up against, un, you know, um, uh, unforgiving odds. That's kind of an odd phrase, but that's all I can think to say at the moment. Um, is a selling point, but like there's a fucking limit to that. Like I, I have to, I have to exercise self-care at a certain point. <laughs> uh, death fight. Yeah, he summons more scythes. I'm really not playing this very well. And to sort of punish myself for not playing well, I really decided that I was not going to drink a potion during this fight. I'm like, I'm going to fucking force myself to actually fight this guy. I fight, when he when he summons the chains like that, I could have used a, a, a dual rush or a dual crash um, to hit him, but I think I just didn't want to use the MP. Um... Also, I didn't skip the dialogue there because I wanted to see Jonathan say, I can kick your ass because I think it's funny. But that fight is actually the source of an infamous glitch where if you skip the dialogue in the Grim Reaper fight, like totally, like if you skip the dialogue before he even starts talking, if you skip it as soon as you possibly can, then the game glitches out and it doesn't, it doesn't think you've killed death. And you can actually get soft locked if you don't immediately leave the boss room. If you, if you, or if you don't leave the boss room to the left. If you kill death and then you're like, wow, I killed death, let me go back and save. And then you go back to the save station and save it. When you reload the file, the boss doors will be down again. And then you go into the death boss room and there's like a death like portal sitting in the middle of the room. And then the doors are locked and you can't get through. And that's a problem because you need to get to the elevator room through the death fight to get to the master's keep um so you're just kind of fucked there's a way to get around it which is to go to the elevator room that connects the master's keep to the tower of death from 
um, from the left, like from below, and then standing in a very specific position where you're like almost inside the room, and almost inside the elevator room coming in from the left and then suspending the game and then reloading it. And the game will think you're like inside the elevator room and will spawn you up in the top right entrance. Um, I don't know if any of what I just said like makes sense or if you're able to visualize it at all, but basically what I'm saying is that if you skip the dialogue in the death fight, you can soft lock the game, and there's a way to get around it, but it's very, very um, specific and tedious and uh, not worth it. So just let just let the dialogue play out. I would advise just not skipping any of it. Just just A button through the whole thing, don't press start. So here I'm going back to get the Sanctuary spell. I wish I didn't have to do this, but I figured out the fastest, most streamlined way to do it. I fucking love the death fight, man. The death fight is so, like... It, the, the death fight in Portrait of Ruin was the first death fight since, like... I guess maybe Castlevania 1, or, like... I can't even... I don't even know what game... The, the first one in a while that, like, seriously walled me. I was like, how the fuck am I supposed to fight this guy? But... I figured it out. Having an overhand swing weapon like the Claymore or the Royal Sword really fucking helps. And that's what's kind of the, the ironic thing about New Game Plus, like hard max level one like this, is that it's almost, there are some parts of it that I would say are almost easier than just playing on normal mode. The, the death fight is like one of the few that kind of gets into that realm because, because like I said, part of what makes the fight so hard on normal mode is the fact that he takes so long to die. Um, I mean, part of that's my fault with the way that I was playing normal mode, like trying to only use Jonathan. Obviously, if you play that fight the way you're intended to, which is swapping between the two of them to take advantage of his vulnerability in each of his two phases, then it's not that long that I'm just stubborn. <laughs> I'm stubborn, and I think it's more fun to try to find solutions with, with like one character at a time. That's just kind of how I am. I think, I, am I going to go, okay, good, yeah. I think I, I didn't want to go back down this way because of, like, going through this room is like a fucking nightmare, and I just didn't want to fuck with it, but I eventually realized, like, yeah, you know, I probably have enough health. I have enough, like, I can I can just get through this part. Because, um, like I said, I don't want to use potions, and I think, I think this is the point where I realized, like, oh shit, I got through, like, the death fight without using potions. Like, I might actually be able to do this thing that I... I had set out for myself kind of like as a challenge stretch goal, so to speak, where it's like, can I avoid using potions until I get to the Nest of Evil? Um, and this is kind of when I realized I was actually close to doing that, and I didn't want to, like, fuck it up. So now uh, we're on our way back to the keep. Yeah, the fucking Sandy Grave. The Sandy Grave is like a really... I actually kind of hate the Sandy Grave. I hate it because of how unreasonable it is on on hard mode. Well, okay, it's only unreasonable if you're an idiot like me and you want to choose like one character at a time. If you play the game the way it's intended and you just swap to fucking Charlotte and have her just kill all the ghosts with Don Quixote, then it's fine. But the way that I was playing it, it was really unfun. But the other thing about the Sandy Grave that I hate is having to like bonk your head into corners to get map completion. And again, that's another thing about New Game Plus that's great. You don't have to worry about map completion. All the unfun stuff excised out. All the unfun stuff except, of course, for this. You know, <clears throat> I already talked about this to death when I did my normal mode video. Um, so I'm going to try not to repeat myself. I'll just say that on hard mode, all of the problems with this fight are exacerbated because... Um, you are you are basically punished harder for fucking up, and uh, that means th th like the harder this fight is, the more I don't like it because I think that the fight is badly designed from the ground up. So to me, the best version of this fight would be a version of this fight where you walk into the room and the fight just instantly resolves itself. So anything that makes it more difficult or more punishing, I'm categorically opposed to, which hard mode does. Um, but uh, the fundamentals of it have not changed. Um, it's just about it's just about waiting and getting lucky. Um, and this is a showcase of something that I don't remember if this happened in the normal mode footage or not. But this is a good showcase of like 
when the vampire sisters just randomly target Charlotte when they're supposed to be targeting you. Like, like, like this, this flight, this, this flight, this fight is just flawed from, from the ground up. Because the idea, like, I already said this, but the idea is that Jonathan is supposed to make them not attack Charlotte, but whether or not they do that doesn't really seem to be under your control. And I, I tried using the taunt sub-weapon before in this fight, and it just doesn't seem to do anything. I was hoping to not take any damage there, because if I don't take any damage on that fight, then I can just run right into the Dark Academy and not run back to the safe station, but it's not the world that we live in. I'm very glad... I mean, I mean, it's over faster. Well, actually, it's not over faster, because you're not, because you're not, uh... You're not actually, like, damaging them. You're not actually fighting them. If I really wanted to min-max, I would have given um, Charlotte the Sorcerer's, the Sorcerer's Crest um, to make that fight easier, but I didn't really do that. The Sorcerer's Crest wasn't something was something that I got when I did, like, Charlotte Only Runs. This is actually really cool. Yeah, so this is, like, an important thing you can do in the Richter fight. And this is something that I think you can only do with the Mastered Shuriken and then high enough int, which is um, stagger him over and over again. And, and here, I... I, I think I was sort of adhering that was fucking ballsy. Yeah, you should never melee Richter. Ever, ever, ever. Oh, never fight this guy with your melee weapon, even if it's the whip. Only fight him with sub-weapons. Um, because you just can't safely close distance with him. Uh... Yeah, you can, and I'm pretty sure that's something you can only do with the Master Shuriken. I don't think anything else in the game does DPS high enough to trigger um, Richter's stagger over and over again like that. I don't, I don't really know. A lot of, a lot of things about this game, like there's, there are, Jonathan has like 20 sub-weapons and I only ever use like five of them. Which is sort of, um, I guess I would call that a problem with the game's design. So the Dark Academy on hard mode is really annoying because Portrait of Ruin, Portrait of Ruin is a frustrating game. It's not as frustrating as Dawn of Sorrow, partially because I chose to engage with New Game Plus and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say like, I really should have played New Game Plus in Dawn of Sorrow. Like, I, I'm not gonna. I, I kind of thought about going back and doing it now, but the the thing that held me back is that in Dawn of Sorrow, enemies all take um, forty percent less damage. So it's like, it's like you don't have to farm, but everything takes longer, which is not really what I what I like. You can I can actually skip this guy. I didn't I didn't know it at the time, or I didn't do it at the time. But you can just jump over that first light keeper, and if you time the jump correctly, you can jump over him without triggering the crow. I don't really know if it's like... I don't know what I don't know what it is exactly that makes it work, but I, I did get the timing down when I did this, when I did the hard mode on, uh, on Charlotte. And obviously, as in all things, hard mode max level 1 on Jonathan is much easier than it is on Charlotte. Um, just because Jonathan is so much faster and more flexible. And just has higher damage and it's just kind of better in every way, combat-wise. I put on the Vampire Killer here instead of the, the Holy Claymore, but I don't exactly remember why. I think it's because there's a, uh, there's like a floating ruler sword, um, up ahead pretty soon. And those things are just, it's just better to fight those things with, um, with the whip than with anything else. But otherwise, the, the, the Dark Academy is sort of a, um, a showcase of irritations. I think the Dragonflies are terrible. Like, the Dragonflies have this really bad habit of just hitting you, and you can't- it doesn't feel like you do anything about it. And that's because, for one thing, sometimes they'll just, like, fly into you when, it, when like, they don't have any visible indication of when they're gonna do that. Kind of like the Bat Company fight in Dawn of Sorrow, you're just gonna have to memorize the timing. And then their fire projectile that they shoot just kind of seems to hit everywhere. <laughs> like, what, what's actually happening is when the fire projectile impacts the floor, it'll send out lots of these, like, little tiny fireballs, but the tiny fireballs go, like, fucking everywhere. So, it's like, it, it, it feels like it's just hitting you when, when it shouldn't. And that's a problem that Portrait of Ruin has in a couple of places, and that's kind of what stops me from calling this game, like, really, really great and making it, like, like, really high tier is the fact that it has a couple it, it makes it makes a couple of really bad decisions and the dark academy is where a lot of them a lot of them are on display i'm mostly talking about the the dragonflies and the um and the frankenstein fight 
And the Frankenstein fight is also some, is also something that I kind of talked to death in my normal mode video, so I'm not I'm gonna try not to repeat myself here. Um, if you didn't watch my normal mode video, the the crux of my problem with the Frankenstein boss is that I don't think it does a good enough job of indicating to you what it's going to do and when it's going to do it. It basically asks you to to react very very quickly to what it does, and it's not always clear what exactly it's going to do, despite despite what it telegraphs. Um, and in hard mode, of course, those issues are exacerbated, and this is kind of like the, the last big test to see if I'm really going to make it all the way to the Nest of Evil without using potions. Like, Death was the first one, but then this thing is the other one, where, like, if I can get past this guy without using potions, then I'm, then I'm going to be fine, because I'm... Nothing else in the game is really as hard as the Frankenstein boss, outside of the Nest of Evil, of course. Uh, and part of what makes it part of part of what makes it balanced, though, is the fact that it's weak to slash, which you wouldn't necessarily think. Which means that the Shuriken can shred it on New Game Plus um, if you're stacking it like this. And let's see how good this is. That okay? That exactly is the problem. That that machine gun attack basically just shouldn't exist because it asks you to react in a way that's very fast and very specific. Um, and it incentivizes gaining distance on him, but all of his other attacks, a lot of, a lot of his other attacks incentivize um, closing distance with him. And you can't get too much distance on him or else he'll be off the screen and you won't see what the fuck he's doing. And that's kind of, and that's kind of the, central, the central problem. So that wasn't bad. As far as Frankenstein fights go, that wasn't bad. And I'm pretty sure he only hit me with the machine gun attack that shouldn't exist. So it, he basically has one too many attacks. One too many attacks. If they'd cut the missile attack, he would be fine. If they cut the machine gun attack, he'd be fine. If they cut the lightning attack, he'd be fine. It's, he just does one too many things that, that ask you to do too many different things to react to him, and he doesn't give you enough time to do those things. That's, that's, that's the problem, basically. Um... I don't, I don't, I don't dislike challenge, but I dislike feeling like the game is telling me to do two different things at the same time. Speaking of doing two different things at the same time, this part is really annoying. Um, this thing should just like die, dude. I hate, I hate having to do this, this weird like super specific positioning thing. And actually at this point in the foot, this point when I was collecting this footage, I didn't know that you couldn't contact yeah, I didn't know that you could safely contact the green part of his body because when I was like crouching there like stutter stepping around to try not to hit him you can actually like cuddle right up to the green part of his body and you don't take damage somehow for some reason but I never knew that um okay now I really need to talk about hard mode and the things about hard mode that suck the armored flea men on hard mode are just completely indefensible the armored flea men the 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 concept behind the armored flea men is a flea man is fast and hard to hit, uh, but it doesn't do that much damage and it dies fast. Armored flea man, the idea is that it does more damage, but it's slower. In hard mode, they made it do more damage and take more damage and also make it just as fast. And in practice, this means that armored flea men will just spaz out and jump all over the place with no discernible pattern, and if they hit you, they hit you, and if they don't, they don't, and it just feels like it feels like just complete and total RNG. It's this thing that I that I talked about where it's like the level of difficulty that I find fun. And I think what's frustrating about it is that I guess I guess maybe I'm just like spoiled at this point because in Dracula's Curse, like Dracula's Curse is like one of my favorite games in the whole series. There's only the only game I like more than Dracula's Curse is Rondo. Um, but Dracula's Curse has enemies that are, like, literally RNG. Like, the RNG skulls in, um, hard mode in Dracula's Curse are literally random with their patterns. But I think that the difference is that... I don't know. It's, it's, it's a weird, like... I think when I play a game from 1989, like Dracula's Curse, and I see something like, something like that in it, I'm like, okay. Like, they... They, they didn't know any better, and this is supposed to be hard, and this is like an arcade-style game, and this is like the ultimate challenge. And it's only, and, and it's like, it's just like, that's just how they are. But the Armored Fleamen, like, tease you, because 
you don't expect because they're not literally random. They they just operate on some like fucked up pattern that makes you feel like like you should know what they're gonna do, but you just fucking don't. With the RNG skulls and Dracula's curse, it's like yeah, they're just random. They're just like unapologetically random, and it's not your fault if they hit you or if they don't hit you. But with with a lot of the enemies in in um, Portrait of Ruin, it's just like. I don't know. I feel like I could have probably just crouched in the corridor there and swung the Holy Claymore and hit those things, because I think they would die in one Claymore swing, although of course I don't... I don't know for sure. I would like to have no damage this part, so that I can just go straight into the boss fight, but that's not how these things work. What's nice, though, about New Game Plus is that all these levels go by really fast. Like, the, the Sandy Grave goes by really fast, the Dark Academy goes by really fast. The Sandy Grave is kind of the most merciful, because there are lots of... There are a couple parts with Armored Flea Men that you just, like, don't have to interact with. Um, if you do New Game Plus and if you just rush the boss. This guy's not really different, any different on Hard Mode than he has on Normal Mode. Um, most of the late game bosses are not. The only boss that's really substantially different on Hard Mode is, like, the Dulahan which you didn't really see, and then the Grim Reaper. Now with the Grim Reaper, it's like harder to tell. He just kind of summons more scythes. Damn, that was fast. Yeah, see, this is what I mean. Like, like... The Mummy is also a boss that act asks you to do many different things. Um... Depending on what it does, like, it wants you to super jump, it wants you to strafe back and forth if it summons the rocks, it wants you to, like, jump over the, the wrappings. But the key difference, I think, is that the the mummy stays on the screen the whole time. The reason that Frankenstein is so fucking hard is that he just, like, wanders away from you. And, like, you can't see what the fuck he's doing. And this is another, like, this is another problem with hard mode, is that they, they made the enemies so strong in some areas that it's like they will just hit you when you can't even see what the fuck they're doing. Like the vice beetles on hard mode you just saw there have a have a range on their poison cloud which means that they can literally just hit you before you even see them. And that reaches the threshold of difficulty that I find frustrating and not um and not rewarding. My, my my baseline philosophy is that if I can't see an enemy on the screen, if I don't know it's there, it shouldn't be able to hit me. Seeing seeing things, understanding that an ob that an obstacle is present is a prerequisite to reacting to that obstacle. And even Dracula's Curse, for all its like shittiness, not shittiness, but for all of Dracula Curse's like ruthless, like 80s arcade gameplay philosophy style shit, they never just like attack shit. You never get like fucking attacked from off the screen. Okay, well, actually you do, because the birds can sometimes um, fly off the screen, but that's like one time in 9-4, pretty much, where that where that could ever happen. Here it's like every time there's a vice beetle, every time there's a spittle bone, every time there's a fucking ripper, the rippers love to just jump in from off screen and throw knives at you and hit you and do like 150 damage. I mean, I, I'll give it... I mean, look, I... I I can't say it's too easy, right? I talked a bunch of shit about Symphony of the Night being too easy, but like here they 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 it's the opposite problem. And and they can't and they can't even make the they can't even make the difficulty engaging. They don't make the difficulty like, okay, here's this boss with like really complicated patterns that you have to like react really quickly to, like um I don't know. Kind of like Dracula's Curse, um, the Dracula fight in Dracula's Curse is a fight that, like, phase one is, like, you have to do really specific reactions and movements, um, if you want to no damage it. Instead, it's just, like, we just throw shit at you from off the screen, and it's just gonna hit you, and you're just gonna take 200 damage, and you, you are shit because you didn't guess or you didn't remember that that thing was there, so now you're, now you're poisoned, ha ha ha. Yeah, the burnt par and the burnt paradise somehow manages to be even worse than the nation of fools for that reason. They did the only thing they could to make it more obnoxious, which is fill up with enemies that give you status effects. So, like, I, I don't get it, man. I don't get what's so hard about what's so hard about just making harmony of dissonance again, right?
like environmental hazards and like rippers and vice beetles and this boring ass fucking music. The burnt paradise is a pile of shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit more negative here than I was being in my normal, in my normal review, just because like, uh, just like looking looking at this again, because this took me multiple attempts, man. Like, and every time every time I fail at this, it's like it's like I lose like 90 minutes of my life. And I just... I mean, I guess that's what you ask for, right? It's a... what do they call it? Um, occupational hazard? But I was really... I just really thought they would have known better at this point than to fill their games with, like, dumb shit. I think that's, I think that's another reason why Dracula's Curse, like, doesn't bother me in the same way. It's because, for one thing, Dracula's Curse, and I've, I've made this point before, Dracula's Curse is over fast, right? It's like 45 minutes, 55 minutes. So my 1ccs are like, are like an over an hour because I died. But generally speaking, the game is over fast. Things don't, like, take too long. If you hit an enemy like a Ripper, if there was, like, when you hit, when you hit an RNG skull, it fucking dies. It doesn't, like, take half its health from a whip shot. It just fucking dies when you hit it like it's supposed to. These, these new Metroidvania games think that it's a, you should have to do, like, 200 damage to a dagger-wielding hunchback that's, like, spazzing out and jumping around and is impossible to hit and can hit you from anywhere, including off the screen. They think they think that you should have to do more than one melee's worth of damage to kill them. I don't get it. That's why that's why I only use the shuriken in in both this and the normal mode footage because the shuriken is the only sub weapon that does enough damage fast enough to kill all the obnoxious shit that Portrait of Ruin insists on throwing at you. I like I literally don't have a choice. Thirteenth Street is okay. Thirteenth Street, I save, I save for last. I, you can do the Burnt Paradise and Thirteenth Street really in, in either order, um, but I do the Burnt Paradise first just to get it out of the way because I fucking hate it. And Thirteenth Street is relatively, um, relatively civilized. It's a little bit annoying because it has a lot of these uh, Salem witches, uh, Alio Rumnas, whatever. Um, oh, and this room coming up here is a giant sack of shit. Yeah, on hard mode you can't jump over these guys. It looks like you can, but you can't. If you try to jump over them, they just like turn around and walk into you. Oh, they do die in one melee. Okay, well, that was nice of them. Um, never mind. Never mind. I still think those things are badly designed because you can't hit them, but at least they die when you hit them. Um, yeah, that room with the two ghouls, they just like... Because enemies in this game will do this obnoxious thing where they're walking in one direction and you try to jump over them, but then as soon as you jump over them, they turn around and start walking in the direction that you are now once you're, like, past them in midair. So, the result of that is that you think you can jump over them, but then as soon as you're past them, they just turn around and walk into you again. Or they, like, catch you on the way down. It's very, very annoying. That was fucking close. I hate those things too because I, I. That's that's actually you know what that those things the va the vapula I think that's what those are called the lion head things that shoot the. Uh, the runes out of their mouths of the curse you they kind of have the same problem as the Dulahan boss, where they have an attack, where there's like a gap there's like a sweet spot but. It's just like hard to tell where that is you you basically don't know, where the safe spot in its attack is until it's already doing it. You know what I mean? Where it's it's like it's hard to describe. Because because if if you fucking memorize the distance, if you memorize like how many pixels in front of it is the safe spot, then you know where to stand every time, but it could be in a different position, so there's no like there's no physical landmarks to say like, okay, if you stand on the table, you're safe, because what if it like moves differently? Same with the Dulahan fight. It's not like you can say, oh well if you stand on like this particular part of the floor, you'll be safe because he might move in a different spot and now the safe zone has has also moved and you have to try to like guess basically and it's just not fun because like harmony of dissonance also like bosses like a two shot you in harmony of dissonance but the bosses in harmony of dissonance actually had like clear fucking patterns 
This is actually pretty cool. This is, uh, the Holy Claymore is the tool that you have in, new, the tool that I have in New Game Plus that I don't have in regular gameplay, because it's not really worth getting. Um, and the Holy Claymore means things die faster and also means I can do cool shit like this. The werewolf is, is, I already kind of talked about the werewolf fight. Um, but he's, he's easier on, in New Game Plus with hard mode if you have, like, the Holy Claymore and Mastered Shuriken like I do. I, I kind of think of the Holy Claymore as, like, a New Game Plus kind of item. Just because you have to, like, buy a bunch of shit at the shop or you have to, like, spend 300,000 gold and it's, it's not really... Not really worth doing. Okay, so there's the first half of the late game done and over with. And I forget, do I do Brawner first? I think I do. This is interesting. I actually don't know... Hmm... I mean, it doesn't matter because I'm not, like, gaining any XP. I'm not getting anything from the Nest of Evil that I wouldn't otherwise get. But I think it would have been smarter to do the Nest of Evil first. Just because I could get it out of the way faster. And because the Brawner fight brings you right into Dracula. Like, you go literally from the Brawner fight to the stairs leading up to Dracula. Which I think would be a little bit more, um, uh like, streamlined. Rather than having to do more trips around the castle to get down to the Nest of Evil, then back up here to Dracula. I don't know. I don't really... It's probably not that big of a difference either way. But I, um... I kind of wish I had I had done it differently. Nothing really to say here about the Brawner fight. Having the Master Bible makes this fight a lot better than having a regular Bible, just because he dies way faster. And that's sort of the, um... That's the thing about New Game Plus that's so much fun to me, is the fact that you die fast and they die fast. It evens it out. That's that's why max level one on a fresh file just makes no sense to me. Because you're just like I don't know. Max level one on on a fresh file, like without new game plus, is kind of like it's kinda of like someone saying, like, I beat the game with one hand. It's like, that's fucking impressive. But that doesn't sound like much fun. I guess I just like a faster paced... You know what it is? You know what it honestly is? I want to turn these games into, like, Rondo. I want to Every time I like, play one of these Metroidvania games, I'm just looking for a way to turn them into, like, a classic-style Castlevania game. Where I don't have to, like... I don't have to interact with any of their weird, fucked-up systems. I don't have to, like, spend a million years fighting enemies. I can just do, like... I can, like, get through the challenging rooms quickly and then learn the boss fights and then just kind of go from there. That's that's what I want. I don't I don't really care about all of this like grinding or farming or um, leveling. That's all just kind of like whatever. So that's why I think I like this hard mode like max level one new game plus so much. With with, with Konami Man and Twin B of course like full, like max power full power because that's kind of what it feels like. It just feels like a very high octane um, classic Castlevania with some a few pieces of really obnoxious level design. And boss design. And that's why I can't I can't be too enthusiastic. I can't give like too much enthusiasm and praise about this game. Cause it's like there are parts that are fun and then um uh and then a few a few big stinking cancerous tumors. The still Loretta fight is a is kind of like that. I describe that as a big stinking cancerous tumor having to use sanctuary. And just kind of hope they don't hit you. I, I know, you know, Sorcerer's Crest, I know, that would make it easier, but... But that's another thing, like, the Sorcerer's Crest is a weapon... I guess I should explain what the Sorcerer's Crest is. The Sorcerer's Crest is a uh, accessory for Sh for Charlotte that um, increases her casting speed. Or, I'm sorry, decreases casting... Or No, increases casting speed, decreases casting time. Uh, when, I, when I upload my Charlotte-only videos, when I upload my Charlotte-only max level 1 hard mode... I'm going to have that, because you basically need it if you want to try to play as only Charlotte. But the way you get it is by getting every single one of Charlotte's um, spell scrolls, which requires... Um... This was fucking insane, by the way. That was, like, so close. Um, that's another, like... That's another thing that I think really shouldn't be possible. I feel like he shouldn't be using... He shouldn't be able to use his petrification breath to, like, block my, my projectiles. 
If I survive long enough to get off two shuriken throws against those minotaurs, I feel like they should just die. I feel I feel like I've done my part. But I barely managed to survive anyway. That's like that's like how people that's how, like, the Circle of the Moon Arena Minotaur Room is, like, supposed to go if you have, like, a max power level. <laughs> if you've, like, learned, learned the room perfectly, you just, like, you just, like, super jump and then magically they just don't hit you. I watched some footage of the Circle of the Moon Arena Minotaur Room, someone, like, no damage again, and it just doesn't, it visually just doesn't make any sense. It looks like they should be getting hit, like, every time. Oh yeah, uh, here I have the Golden Axe to fight the- I actually forget if I have the Golden Axe in the normal mode footage. I think I might? I don't remember, but but here I do. Um, I use the Golden Axe on Balor partially because I'm... Um, it's just simpler, and with this guy's patterns, like, the simpler he is, the better. The thing is that the Shuriken would do a lot of damage to him because he's weak to Slash, but if you want to use the Shuriken, you have to jump. And jumping against Balor, unless you're specifically reacting to one of his attacks, is kind of a risky proposition because he could just shoot the laser out of his eyes, or he could do, like, the horizontal fist move, which, well, unless you unless your feet are, like, 100% on the floor, will hit you. But also, using only a melee weapon gives me a chance to, um, to, uh, regain some MP. And one thing that I do want to do in the Nest of Evil is, uh, I'll go back to the save station and heal up if I have to, because I, I am resigned to using my healing items, but I also want to save the healing items for when I need them, like, mid, mid-floor clear. Um... But I don't but I don't want to do that unless I have to, just because I want to keep the pace of the footage up. Like I wanna go through this shit fast. I don't want to go back to the save to a save station every single time I clear a um uh I clear a room. That was pretty close. Am I gonna get hit here? I feel like this was bad okay, barely I barely don't get hit. If he had survived for another second, he would have yanked the um the wrecking ball back and hit me. So here is the first room in the Nest of Evil that has the cave trolls in it. The cave trolls are, like, insane on hard mode. I think they do, like, 400 damage. So you have to kill them. They're, like, the scariest... One of the scariest enemies in the game, pretty much. And you have to kill them really fast. There's only one of them in there, but there's gonna be another room with, like, five of them. Is this the horrible room? Yeah, this is, like, stupid. It's not bad on Jonathan, but on Charlotte, this is, like, a pile of dicks. <laughs> And this is what I mean when I say that the shuriken, like, the game forces you to use it, because, like, what else, what other options do I have in the situation that I was in there? When there's, like, fucking six armored flea men all coming at me at once, I have one option, and the one option is use the shuriken. Uh, there's nothing else I can do. Like, because Charlotte's spells literally don't cast fast enough, even if you have the sorcerer's, the sorcerer's crest. And... Dual crushes do damage based off of your level, and so you have, I, I assume, because dual crushes on max level 1 do, like, no fucking damage. Like, greatest 5 does, like, 35 damage on max level 1, which I actually like, because I actually, I actually don't like dual crushes conceptually. I kind of don't like the idea of there being, like, an overpowered super attack you can use to just, like, get a bunch of free damage on an enemy. That was sort of my problem with item crashes all the way back in Rondo. And so I'm glad that hard max level 1 kind of makes it so that you can't really do that. There are a couple of niche situations, I think, where, like, Greatest 5 is still useful. But that's kind of the only one that is useful, because it's doing some damage instead of literally no damage. Um, by the way, can I just say, I really wish that I could kill Gurgoth that fast in Dawn of Sorrow. This is why the fact that the Nest of Evil is full of Dawn of Sorrow bosses is not actually what makes it hard. Um... What makes it harder are a couple of the rooms. Well, and Abaddon is back, of course. My best friend. My best friend Abaddon, Igarashi's favorite boss in the series, uh, makes a return here. But other than that, the only hard parts of this of this of the Nest of Evil are like the double Frankenstein room, which I'll talk about, um, and then uh, Abaddon, and then fake Grant, fates, fake Sypha, fake Trevor. But even then, like, if I, if you're playing on Jonathan. None of that shit is really that bad. It seems bad when you do it, but then when you try to play it with Charlotte, that's when it becomes, like, a miserable nightmare. So I probably just shouldn't have done it, but it's this- it's the- it's what I already talked about. It's, like, the whole reason that I'm doing, like, this Jonathan-Charlotte thing instead of just doing one with both of them is because the way that these later Castlevania games are designed... 
it's it's taking after Dracula's Curse because Igarashi loves Dracula's Curse. But the problem is that the design of these new games is just fundamentally different from the design of Dracula's Curse. Where in Dracula's Curse, like, you switch to Grant because Grant can climb walls, right? You switch to Sypha because Sypha can shoot lightning to home in on the birds across the screen, and nothing Trevor can do even comes close to that. With Charlotte and Jonathan, it's like they both basically do the same thing, which is just kill enemies on the screen. They're just like slightly different in slightly different contexts. And the Grim Reaper fight is really the only time in the whole game where the game like really strongly incentivizes using Charlotte over Jonathan because it and it does it in a way that's kind of like artificial, where it's just like she just she, you know, the Grim Reaper in phase one just only takes damage only takes substantial damage from um uh, that was fucking crazy, by the way. From, um... From magic attacks. He... And by the way, like, when he summoned the daggers like that, he... That really shouldn't have happened. Because what's supposed to happen in the... In the Zephyr fight is that when he charges up his, like, time freeze thing, when he, like, crouches and he gets, like, the after images around him, it's like... It's what's, what the game says happens is if you hit him, he charges at you, and if you don't hit him, he summons the daggers. But there's a third option... Which is that if you just jump in the air high enough, he like loses track of where you are and he doesn't do anything and he just cancels it. And that's what like should have happened there, but I guess I just was slightly too close to him and he triggered his like summon dagger attack anyway, even though I really think he shouldn't have. Yeah, the golden skeletons are pretty scary on hard mode. Everything in the Nest of Evil is scarier on hard mode. Um, you know, that should that should go without saying, but it's but it's really especially the case here. Um And, uh, like, I, I like the nest, like, the nest of evil is kind of like a microcosm of Portrait of, of Portrait of Ruin as a whole, where it's mostly fine, but there are one or two really garbage, part, really garbage spots that make it, like, terrible. Really, it's really only one. It's really only the double Frankenstein room, um, which I already, like, went on about at length in my normal mode video, so I'm going to try not to repeat myself, but it's basically take everything that I said about the Frankenstein fight and why it's badly designed, and, and then multiply that by two. Except it's more like, more like square it, actually, because it's cause kind of like an exponential shitfest. So it's like the double Frankenstein room, and then it's Abaddon. And I guess, and the doppelganger is honestly like not a fun boss to fight either. The doppelganger at the end of the, uh, um, at the end of the Nest of Evil, it's just, it's just, it's just kind of like temp. It's just kind of say, it's just kind of telling you to just cheese it basically, because he's so punishing and he's so hard to fight. It's kind of like a throwback again to Dracula's Curse, where like doppelganger enemies in in um. Uh, doppelganger bosses in Castlevania games are usually puzzle bosses in that, like, and when I say puzzle boss, what I mean is a boss that is not necessarily testing your, like, any, like, reaction time or, like, any technical understanding of the boss's... It's not testing your reaction time, right? It's not testing your, like, your speed or anything like that. What it's What it's testing is... It's not like you beat this boss by by out maneuvering it or out damaging it. You beat the boss by learning like one specific thing about it and then exploiting it. Like for example, the doppelganger in Dracula's Curse is like the perfect example of this. Where if you try to actually fight the doppelganger, oh, is this the room? Yeah, here it is. Well, here I I just decided that I was gonna say fuck it and I was just gonna try to actually fight them because what you're supposed to do well not there's there is no supposed to do with this room. In this room, you're supposed to um. You're supposed to just, like, turn off the DS and then snap the cartridge in half as soon as you see this horse shit. But what I decided to do was that, like, because the strat that I had originally employed to get through this room was just, like, super jump on the ceiling over and over and over again. And then try to dodge the missiles when they shoot them, and then try to dodge the lightning when they shoot it. But I eventually realized that, like, if I'm already dodging their attacks, why don't I just fucking fight them? Why don't I just try to, like, burn one of them down really fast and just get out of this shit fest faster and have the satisfaction of watching these two fuckers die? Because, like, th like this is what I mean. This fight is, like, is like a fucking nightmare. It's just a microcosm of nothing but, but like, no-win scenarios over and over again, where there's literally nothing 
there's like no right decision to make half the time. Because what you can never do with these assholes is you can never let them get off the screen because then they just shoot lightning at you and you can't see that they're doing it and then you just get fucking hit. But you also can't stay too close to them because then they just fucking hit you with the missile attack or with like the lightning attack or with the machine gun attack. So the game is telling you simultaneously to be as far away from them as possible and also as close to them as possible. There's like this mythical distant sweet spot where you're like just far away enough to react to the machine gun fire in time, but also close enough to see them on the screen. But the problem is that they could just fucking wander away from you, and the other problem is that they're constantly telling you to move. So it's really easy to end up in a position where you to end up out of that like that like magical sweet spot and and in a spot where now you're just getting hit by lightning you can't see. And it's like, what if it been so hard to just not fucking design the boss like that? And this room is also a giant pile of shit, by the way, because, like, usually I fucking, like, I just, like, dis destroy this room in two seconds. But this room is, like, this room is entirely dependent on, on RNG. If the Iron Golem walks in front of the double axe armors, you're just fucked. If the Iron Golem walks behind them, then you can actually clear the room in, like, a civilized fashion. Um... So, this part of the Nest of Evil just sucks a hundred dicks. It's mostly the Double Frankenstein room. The Double Frankenstein room is so terrible that it actually prevents this game from, like... This game could be... I'm, like, make, I'm putting it together, together a tier list, and the Double Frankenstein room, room, like, lowers this game's ranking by, like, two tiers. Well, that lowers it by one tier, and then the Stella Loretta fight with the Sanctuary spell lowers it by another tier. It's, it's frustrating. These DS games so far have been very frustrating. Oh, and am I on Abaddon? No, 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 no. One more room before Abaddon. No, instead it's this fucking room. Where you just have to hope that the shurikens you threw, enough of the shurikens that you threw hit them, and none of them threw a dagger that blocked one of your shurikens and caused them to take only 77 damage. The, the rippers should have 1 HP. If you hit a ripper, it should die. That's just my opinion. Those, because they just move way too fucking fast. So here's Abaddon, and fortunately for me, oh great, see, it's, it's like, do I even need to say anything? As you can see there, fortunately for me, my extensive practice with the Dawn of Shor Sorrow boss rush, specifically fighting Abaddon on Julius, meant that I have a uh, nice little bulwark of experience dealing with Abaddon. Um, a nice buffer, I should say, not a bulwark. Bulwark, and, and the way you fight Abaddon is basically identical to the way that you fight him in Julius mode, except it's actually slightly easier because if you have a mastered cross, then the cross is bigger, which means that you don't have to worry about like whip flailing. To intercept some of the larger um, insect attacks. You can just throw a cross and the cross will just deal with it. That being said, the cross moves pretty fast, so you do have to be careful with your timing. If he does like the forward waterfall attack and you throw the cross too, um, too early, then it won't hit all of them and some of them will still get through and maybe hit you. So you do have to kind of time it properly. And you probably want to throw both of them too. Just to be safe. But I did it. He only hit me a couple times, um, and I air shot him at the end. So that's pretty. That's like that's as good an Abaddon fight really as I can hope for. And it's possible that whip flailing makes that boss easier, but I really just don't like trying to like incorporate whip flailing into into a a regular gameplay strategy because it's very like I don't know. It just doesn't like it just doesn't feel good. I just I'd rather just throw a sub weapon. And, and then forget about it. This room is weird because this room is like so easy. It feels like this room should be harder than it is, but it's it's not. So here I actually do just just fucking super jump in the sky the whole time because I just don't want to fucking bother. They they just they just don't die fast enough because they're immune to the shuriken, which means they can't. They, they just can't die fast enough. I don't know, maybe the cross would kill them, but the cross, I feel like, doesn't go far enough. 
Charlotte could kill these guys no problem. Charlotte with piercing beam clears out this room really easily, but but Jonathan just like can't do it. And this is actually a perfect visual indicator of when I talk about how you have to be careful when you modulate the difficulty of these RPG style castle of these like RPG Castlevania games. Where if you make something too hard, the player is gonna just do stupid shit to avoid the challenge. That's literally what we're looking at right here. That's what that's what like mastery farming is. That's what soul farming in Dawn of Sorrow is, kind of. Um, actually, no, not really. That's most mostly just like what what. That's like what Portrait of Ruin feels like. It feels like banging your head on the ceiling over and over again so you don't get get um, skinned alive. This is another room that's just not hard, but the game thinks it is. Because they just, like, die. <laughs> So now we have the fake Grant, fake Sypha, fake Trevor fight, which is much, much easier on uh, Jonathan than it is on Charlotte. On Charlotte, it's a fucking nightmare. Um, on Jonathan, it's basically going to be the same on hard mode as it was on normal mode. Um, just slightly scarier. I actually don't remember how this goes. This might go badly. The, the thing about this fight that makes it terrible is the fact that, like, Trevor... Trevor is just, like, too good at the game. Trevor will sometimes... Okay, that is also pretty dumb. But Trevor will sometimes just, like, jump you when you don't expect him to... Well, jump when you don't expect him to jump. And he just, like, catches you when you're trying to jump over him. When there's no, like... Like, jumping over him is the correct move, but then he punishes you for jumping over him. It's, it's, it's a great example of a no-win scenario that I talked about. Where it's not at all clear what the game expects you to do to not get hit by him. Because the correct thing to do to not get hit by him is to jump over him, but then if you jump over him, he jumps at you and hits you. So what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to hope that he doesn't do that, which is not a great feeling. But what I do like about this is that I, I whenever I played this, whenever I fought this guy, this boss in Symphony of the Night, I always like... Alucard always killed it in two seconds, and then um, Richter literally killed it in two seconds with the Holy Water item crash. So I always kind of wondered what this fight would actually be like um, to do normally, and it turns out it's actually not that fun, because Trevor's too good. In, the, in my Charlotte footage when I do max level one, just Trevor literally outplays me. He literally like jumps over my attacks. It's, it's, it was insanely frustrating at the time, but it's pretty funny to watch. Unfortunately, we're almost at the end of this slog, and when I talked about- I already talked about the doppelganger boss a little bit. Um, wow, okay, I'm not changing anything else? Okay, well. Oh, I have the cross on. Okay, I didn't- I didn't see that I had it on. That's- that's basically- when I fight the doppelganger, I just try to turn him into Richter again, because I know how to fight Richter. Or, like, the whip's memory boss, I mean. I can just fight Richter by jumping over him, by like baiting his attacks and then jumping over him, um, and then uh, hit, killing him with the shuriken. And you might be wondering, Shovatar, why can't you just bait Trevor's attacks? Well, it's because Trevor is like, Trevor is like too good. He doesn't, he doesn't. Or, or, no, well, what is what it is is that Trevor is too slow. When Richter runs to attack you in the corner. He, like, runs up to you, and it's really clear when he's about to do it. Trevor will just, like, slowly walk over to you, and then, like, by the time, like, as soon as you're in whip range, he just whips you. And then if you try to wh jump over him, he just turns around. Or he randomly jumps to intercept you, and there's nothing you can do to, like, prevent it. And then you, and then you, I mean, you can, you can time a double jump to, like, bait his first jump. And then barely get over his whip and then go behind him, but like now you just ju you just jumped into a Sypha spell, right? That's why that that's why that fight is not fun because it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like there's a clear path to victory. I would contrast that directly with the Death Dracula fight. I've already kind of I've already kind of sang the praises of this boss fight, but I'm gonna sing it again. 
I love the way that this boss is designed. I think this is a really, really, really fun and cool and, like, one of the best final boss fights in any of these games. I fucking love this fight because it's tough and it's complicated and it's making very demanding it, it's very demanding it's constantly it's constantly forcing you to evaluate your position in the room but everything that happens is very clear if you take damage in this fight you know exactly what happened and why you took that damage it's like oh i didn't bait death properly or it's like oh I fucked up Dracula's, like, fire pattern, or, oh, I, I could have, you know, found a better route to safety during this particular combination. Like, everything in this fight is hard, but but conveyed properly, and it's totally fair. It's not like the front and, and, like, it's not like death randomly flies off the screen and then telegraphs some attack you can't fucking see and then hits you. No, you can see Dracula. You can see death, and if you are smart and you remember which attack Dracula did last, you can remember what Dracula's going to do. So it never comes as a surprise. The game is never hiding vital information from you, and it's never putting you in situations where like you don't know what the enemies are going to do or why they're going to do it. With death, it's a very clear case of like if you're under him, he attacks you, right? With Dracula, it's like he shoots the magma balls or he shoots the fireballs, and you know what those are and you know what, what those are going to be. So the game never like fucks with you or lies to you or or makes you feel like you don't have the information you need or makes you feel like you don't understand. It's all very, very clear. And True Dracula is the same way, where it's like, if True Dracula does this particular telegraph, that means he's going to do this particular attack and the impetus is on you to react to it correct correctly. He's not hiding from you. There is actually a moment in my Charlotte hard max level 1 footage where something like that does happen, where he hits me from off the screen, but that could credibly be said to be my fault. Where, like, I maybe didn't manage my, my distance with him as well as I could have, so he was, like, off the screen when I expected him not to be, but, like, that, like, very rarely happens on the true Dracula fight. Usually it's a very, it's very clear and civilized case of this is what I'm going to do, here's how you react to it. He never asks you to do two things at the same time the way the Frankenstein does. I wish the music was a little bit better. And I, and I think I think this attack probably shouldn't exist because this attack is just kind of like a gimmick. And it's not very interesting and it's not very difficult. It basically just, like, wastes time. Because once you learn how it works, you're never going to get hit by it. I don't know, maybe it's supposed to be, like, a DPS check, but you're never going to fail fail this DPS check. Maybe maybe you can if you're playing, like, max level 1 on a fresh file with, like, no Konami Man, no Twin B, but... Um, at that point, you're like, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Like, wh whether a challenge is fair or not at that point is irrelevant, because you've already demonstrated that you don't give a fuck. So there's True Dracula, two, two fucking excellent boss fights in a row. That's hard max level one. Um, like I said at the start, the most fun way to play the game in my opinion, because you don't have to do any, like, you already have your masteries from a previous run, you don't really have to engage with the quest system at all. Um, and to be totally honest with you, absolute number one most fun way to play this game skip the fucking nest of evil just don't go there like it means if you skip the nest of evil it means you don't have to worry about wins quests at all you can just go through the whole game you only have to go talk to him once after you get still after you get um stella's locket then you can just like fucking play the game you skip the double Frankenstein room, you skip the um, Trevor Sypha Grant fight, you skip fucking Abaddon, and you skip the doppelganger boss. So you skip basically four of the five worst parts of the whole game. You still have to do the, the Stella Loretta casting sanctuary spell thing, but if you take the time to get the Sorcerer's Crest for Charlotte, that problem will disappear. Because... Um, I think the Sorcerer's Crest re re um, reduces cast time proportionally rather than by a flat amount. So the sanctuary spell is like way faster if you get that. That's my that's my basic recommendation. It's kind of like I 
I don't know, man. M maybe I've just reached the point where it's like I'm not good enough at these games, but but the Nest of Evil is just just like not fun. Abaddon is just is just not fun, especially having to do Abaddon at the end of a fucking run when there's like an hour plus on the line. It's just not fun. Um, the double Frankenstein room is is an utterly indefensible piece of anti-game design. Um, the t si the Trevor Grant Cypher fight is pretty bad. Um, it's a it's cool in concept, but the game just doesn't give you enough good options to deal with the problems that are presented before you. In my opinion, of course, I'm sure people disagree. I'm sure people in the comments are saying Shovatar. I beat this on on max level one, fresh save file with with uh, a dick up my ass, and while I was bleeding, and after I just recovered from kidney surgery, and I no damaged the the double Frankenstein room by by this arcane technique taught to me by a shaman from Tibet. Great, I'm happy for you. Congratulations. It's not fun. That's the bottom line. I know uh, that's not it's uh, it's not the kind of challenge that I find fun. I mean, I'm I'm gonna like I, I didn't say this. I'm not gonna talk about this yet because it has to do with Charlotte. But there's like a particular thing involving like footage because there's I mean because obviously people have done it right. Obviously people have no damage to the nest of evil. It's obviously possible. But there's a particular video that I found of somebody no damaging the nest of evil, and I'm convinced the motherfucker is cheating, because the thing that he's, the things that he shows in the gameplay footage just are not what happens in reality. And I'm not going to go into any more detail about that until I get to Charlotte, because like I said at the start, it has to, it has to do with Charlotte. But it's just really frustrating to try to find a solution to a problem and then be given a solution that simply does not work in practice. Anyway, I'm sorry I got so like pissed off and negative towards the end there. It's just that's kind of like the impression. That's kind of like the the effect that the nest of evil has on me. Because to be honest with you guys, like w when I do stuff like that, when it's like it's like I can't figure out a certain boss or like I can't do it the way that I want to do it or at the level of consistency that I feel like I should or like there's something I can't figure out, it does like, kind of feel like a personal failure. Like the fact that I never figured out the double Frankenstein room feels like it feels like I let myself down or like I didn't do what I was supposed to. So that's why it's so frustrating to me, and that's, and that's why it, like, needles me in a way that the other things don't. But, I don't know, I spent, like, I've just spent so long with this game, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what else I can do. But just playing the game, like, taking, and this is another thing that's frustrating about New Game Plus, is that, excuse me, New Game Plus is fun, New Game Plus excises all the obnoxious stuff, but but you have to like prepare for it. You basically have to build a game from the start to make it what it should have been from the start. Like you have to you have to master everything ahead of time, get Konami Man, get Twin B, get the Sorceress Crest. Um, when really none of the things that you're trying to compensate for should be in the game in the first place. In my opinion. So in that sense, it's similar to Dawn of Sorrow, but the problems are not as, um, not as frequent. Like, I, you don't have to, like, and, and the damage reduction, in Dawn of Sorrow you do 60% damage, and this you're doing 75% damage, which is, I guess, a pretty low difference. But it's a difference that I feel like I would, I would maybe notice when it comes to things like the Shuriken, because the Shuriken does, like, four bursts of small damage. Anyway... This was fun. This was more fun than I made it sound towards the end. There's just some frustrating stuff at the very end. I hope you guys enjoyed all this Jonathan footage. I'm going to be posting some, some Charlotte stuff coming after this. Thank you all for sticking with me through my long periods of inactivity um, and for putting up with my complaints. There's my smiley face indicating my stamp of approval on New Game Plus Report to the Ruin. Keep on Earth rocking. I'll see all you guys on the other side of the painting, I guess. <laughs>